In this module, we're going to be working on uh, vectors. But just for a uh, qualitative understanding, we're going to, no math yet, but we'll take look at an idea of uh, what vectors are and uh, how to add them graphically. To be honest, how a vector is defined is really beyond the scope of this course. It's more of an advanced mathematical entity. Um, but we're going to look at it in in uh, in the context that in uh, this course it can be described um, rather easily. We're going to say that a vector is an entity that requires for its complete description a magnitude and a direction. So a vector requires a magnitude and direction. Okay, so what does that mean? A, a good way to think about that is in, uh, in comparison to a scalar, which is often the type of thing that we usually think about, which only requires a magnitude for its complete description. So let's think about that. Let's say you want to know what the mass of a tiger is. Well, we can uh, describe that with one number and a unit. We can say it's 300 kilograms. Or we might want to know what the height of a tree is, and we can describe that with one number. We might say it's 30 meters. But let's say that we're being chased by a tiger, and the nearest tree is 50 meters away. Just that one number, 50 meters, doesn't give us enough information. We need to know the direction that it is in. So for our vector that tells us where tree is, we might find that it's 50 meters directly north. So here's an example of where we needed a vector, for a magnitude and a direction for a complete description of uh, the quantity, which is the tree is 50 meters away and it's directly north. So let's, um, I want to look at that a little more uh, closely with a couple other examples that will sort of go into the details of, of uh, what a vector is. Here I have a map of the uh, part of the OU campus. And let's say I want to go from Nielsen Hall, which is here, to the parking garage, which is right here. Okay, now I might find that this uh, distance is 300 meters, but that 300 meters does not give me enough information to find where that is. For example, Nielsen Hall is also uh, 300 meters away from the Union. And so if I want to know, get from Nielsen Hall to the parking garage, I need a magnitude and a direction, and I can say that's 300 meters. And for a direction, I need to be able to reference it somehow. And since, like before, we sort of have a map, and so it's, uh, it's often useful to have sort of a north, south, uh, east, and west coordinate system. And so that allows me to uh, define a direction. If I describe this angle as theta, I can measure it, and I would find that this line, this arrow here, it represents 300 meters, and it lies at an angle uh, 20 degrees west of north. Here's the north, and it's to the, to the west of it by this angle of 20 degrees. So I have a magnitude and a direction now that it describes this vector that gets me from Nielsen Hall to the parking garage. Now, uh, if I want to go to the, um, the Union, 
that's also 300 meters, but it is, say, 45 degrees east of north. Same magnitude, different direction gives me a different vector. Now, I don't want to write this all over again, so what I'd like to do is represent these vectors by uh, some sort of label. So this is my vector to the garage. I might give it the label G. Now, I don't want to just give it this label because this is the sort of label that we give scalars as well. So vectors are often represented by a letter or a symbol with a line over it or possibly an arrow. I will mostly use lines and uh, faster to write, but you can also see them with arrows or in many textbooks there in, in bold print. Okay, and so if this is the vector that gets me to the union, I might give give it the symbol U with a line over it. So you ask the question, is the vector G equal to, a little question mark, the vector U, and the answer is no. Even though they're the same magnitude, they are different directions, and so they do not represent the same vector. So let, let's take a look at another vector here. Let's say I want to go from Boren Hall to Collings Hall. That's represented by that vector there. Now if I draw my my north and west coordinate system, I find that this vector is 300 meters, also 20 degrees west of north. This angle here, 20 degrees. So let's assign this uh, value. Uh, let's call it's going to uh, Collings Hall from Bourne to Collings Hall. We'll call this a C vector. So this vector is C. This vector is G. And the question I ask now is that is this vector C the same vector as vector G? They're going from different places and ending at different places, but are they the same vector? And the answer is yes. And this brings up one very important part of vectors, is that, um, important, I'll give it a little star, vectors not defined by uh, initial or final point. That it is not defined by where it's starting or ending. It's only defined by its magnitude and direction. So if they have the same magnitude and the same direction, then those vectors are equal. And that that's important because one of the things that it lets you do is it lets you translate vectors or move them around on your map or your page or your coordinate system. If I take this vector, this vector C here, and I translate it up to where G was, I get exactly the, the same vector. So because they're independent of where they start or they stop, they're only defined in terms of their magnitude or direction. Okay, so let's um, now talk a little bit about uh, adding vectors together. Clear this. Okay, so let's say now, um, if I were to actually walk from Nielsen Hall to the garage, I would not follow this uh, red line. It goes right through this building. In fact, it looks like it goes through my dean's office. He probably um, doesn't want to be disturbed. So I would, in fact, walk this way. And uh, we would say that's 103 meters west, and that's a vector, and then I would walk up here, and that would be uh, 252 meters north, and these are two vectors. I might call this vector A, and I might call these this vector B, and we see that by 
by following vector a and then following vector b, I might write that a plus b, I get to exactly the same point that if I had followed my original vector g. And so adding these first two vectors a and b together, I get to the exact same point as if I just followed vector g. And so this is an example of adding vectors graphically. And in fact, a particular method, in, and this is called the, uh, the tail to tip method of adding vectors. And so the tail to tip method of adding vectors comes in three steps. The first step is you draw uh, vector 1. Okay. And remember, since you there, uh, you can translate these vectors, you can move them around, you, so you can draw vector 1 wherever you'd like. Then you place the tail of vector 2 uh, at the tip of vector 1. Then the sum of these two vectors is from tail of vector 1 to tip of vector 2. So you can see, since I can translate this uh, across, I had here's the here's vector 1, this is vector A, and we had the tail of vector B at the tip of vector A, and that goes to here, and then that is now the same, the resulting vector goes from the tail of vector A to the tip of vector B. So let's do a, uh, a couple more examples of this uh, vector, the adding vectors graphically. So if I had, oop, let me get a different color. So if I called this vector a and this vector b. If I were to add them together, I would take, if I wanted, then uh, a plus b, I would take the tail of b to the tip of a by translating I can translate as long as I don't rotate, because rotate changes the direction. Then the result goes from the tail of A to the tip of B, like that. If I were to look at one more, I might, I might let's look at example of vectors along a, long, along a line. If I had A that, that pointed that way, and a b that pointed that way, we do the same thing. We have our first vector, which is here. Then we take the tail of vector 2 to the tip of vector a by translating it. Then the resulting vector goes from the tail of the first one to the tip of the second one. And so that is vector c. So finally, our last uh, idea here is to note that vector addition is commutative. a plus b is equal to the b plus a. If I have for this first example, I have b that looks like this, and then I bring a, add it graphically, like this, then the vector c, which is the resulting between them, is exactly the same as the vector c that I had from a plus b. 
So in summary, a vector is an entity that requires a magnitude and a direction. It is not defined by where it starts or stops, which means you can translate it as you, but not rotate it anywhere along your page or coordinate system. And you can add graphically using the tip to tail method as well as it being commutative. And that's the end of this module.